I like to do is really tell the story of what we do at the Academy in the search for talent. But I also want to share the long journey that goes into the discovery of talent. The other levels of play, boys and girls with dreams, parents with dreams, we as educators having our own dreams. You've just seen the future, but you've only seen one of the future. There are going to be dozens of them, boys and girls, big and strong. You better start preparing your farm team right now. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to run to the tennis courts, and I'm going to prepare for the future right now. And when the future comes, I'm going to be ready. There are certain factors that I look at, sort of the Ten Commandments, when I'm trying to determine, does this student have some of these qualities to be able to get them to become at least a collegiate player, a professional player? Sometimes I dream that I'm still my same age and I'm playing a tournament and I beat this girl. Yeah. I beat her 6-0, 6-0. Oh, I see. Is that a good score to win by? It is? It's okay to lose, but try to always play your best. All right. Let's take a look. I want you to watch the footwork. Watch that concentration. Hits the ball coming up off the ground. Moves extremely well. Go ahead, keep going. Good. Good girl. When she comes in, just go ahead, continue. Look at the attitude of coming forward. What I look for, look at those feet. Up off the ground. Good. Again, she has no change of face when she misses it. Give her an overhead. Easy does it. Good girl. Excellent overhead. Again, try it again. Take your time. Beautiful. Up. Perfect. Go ahead on back to the baseline again. Is this fun? Yeah, it's fun. Uh, do you have a, a student who might excel later on? Yep, you sure do. But you know, she talks brilliantly. She hits the ball up off the ground, but it's her feet and focus. Unbelievable feet and focus. Very, very aggressive. Great balance. But look, look at the spunk. That's what I sort of look at. See, she seems to be in the right place at the right time. And now you don't want to become too particular and say your balance is poor or more follow through. Just watch. Good girl. I mean, see, she's going to be very, very comfortable at the net. Now notice that her left side is a little weaker than her right side because she uses her right hand a lot better. So if I work with her, which I'm going to start with, I make her start using more left hand just like that. And I do that by letting her play just with the left hand on the racket. Just your left hand. Come on, you got to practice this every single day. Excellent. Use that hand, speed up that racket a little bit. Excellent. And do it again. Now put your right hand on there. But make believe you only have your left hand. Use the left. Perfect. Go a little quicker. Excellent. 
Speed it up. Perfect. Come on. Beautiful. Can you have a winner? Maybe. Long way off. She's only seven. But what I look for, the feet, the balance, the attitude. Look at that overhead. Well, you wait years to have somebody hit an overhead like this. She tries everything. She has other values. She's intelligent. She set some high goals for herself. What might happen between now and 15 or 16? Who knows? A lot depends on the parents. A lot depends on her parents. It's one of the things that she wants, she loves more than anything else. She would say, please take me out to the tennis court. And so we, you know, we would take her out. She would be the one to actually motivate herself to get out to the tennis court. We didn't have to do anything at all. Now she changes hands, which we'll adjust later on on that. Also notice that she attacks the ball. She doesn't wait for the ball. Right. She comes forward for the ball, and that I kind of like. See, she comes forward to the ball. Right. Not much you can say here, but just to wait. But just let her come up and experiment. You don't want to tell this little girl what to do and go to one hand and go to two hands. We'll do that in the next year or two. Everything you do in life, you're the leader. You lead yourself. You're going to fall down a lot of times, and we'll talk about things, and you'll talk to your parents, but you must be willing to fall down in order to get up to another level, okay? And we have to com communicate. Can you talk? Yes. I know you can. All right. Well done. You've just seen my little girl, seven years old. Her name is Cece. She talks brilliantly. She has a lot of esprit de corps. She knows who she is. But you know something? There are certain factors that I look at that give me a little signal, not a guarantee, that says, Nick, you might have another one. I want to share those factors with you. And let's see if you can implement them into your teaching system or into your concept of saying, hey, looks like we have a collegiate player or maybe a professional player. Number one, focus. She's only seven years old, but look at her focus. She's blocked out everything, the same as Beyond Borg, and all she's doing is focusing on the ball and what's happening on the tennis court, nothing else. Number two, footwork. What has been given to her from up above? It's amazing, she doesn't look like she's going to be in position, but she's in position beautifully. Number three, Cece has the feel of the ball, hands and eyes, the ability to create when she's caught out of position. I look to see what the student does by themselves, and look how she improvises. That is essential in the long run, to be able to hit any type of shot. The next factor, the fight. Love to compete. McEnroe, Connors, Navatilova. This little girl is right in the show. She loves to get out there and compete. You don't have to say one word to her. And she's enjoying being in a battle. She may be nervous, but she enjoys the competition. And there's no substitute for that type of feeling. Let's use the expression, follow the lead. She not only follows the coach, but she also is a leader. You can't buy that. If you are always a follower, you'll never be able to command the show. So in my teaching, I look to see if they listen to what you're talking about. They may not agree with you, but they'll discuss it. But once they're on the tennis court, they have to become the captain of the ship. A coach can only do so much. You do everything you can before they go into battle, but let them become the captain of the ship in everything they do. If they do that, they'll also have a fantastic life when they get married, go into business, go to college, or whatever they may do. The next factor, their physical makeup, their athletic background, how big they may become. You have to look into the background today of the family. Why do I bring that out? The size will determine, at times, what type of game a person may have to play. And it looks like this girl is not going to be a big girl. So what type of game is it necessary for her to have in order to compete against the big giants? I like to talk about fear. Having nerves is part of life. 
It's who's able to control those nerves the quickest when they're in battle. Being nervous is not something to be ashamed of. It's something that's very natural. But it's the person who's able to come back and conquer. You must also be fearless of going to another challenge, challenging another level of play. And if you fall flat on your fanny, it's the attitude that you have after the result. What are you going to do about what happened? Are you going to let it happen again, or are you going to change it? Now we talk about the future. Now we talk about the parents. The parents eventually will play a crucial role in the development or the failure of the student. If we can get that pyramid to have the coach, the student, and the parents work together as a team, you'll have a chance to reach your ability level. The fire, the feeling they have within themselves, that makes them a special person. If you can have that fire within yourself to look forward to each and every day with a new challenge, not worrying what's going to happen, but accepting the challenge, you can really be something. And CC seems to have this quality. Finally, the fun factor. I don't care if they become a professional, as long as the child is having fun and looking forward to coming back and being with you again, you've won at least 90% of the battle. Fun is part of life. I've been in this game 44 years. I've enjoyed every single minute. Those are the 10 factors that I consider of having the possible development of another top player of the world. How do we increase the chances of having more CCs? We do that by getting more children involved in sports, with some of them going to tennis. In order to do that, we are now discussing very seriously a new program at the Academy, the development of motor skills for young children, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight years old. Easy games, success to all. They begin to know who they are. They begin to feel the ball. They feel good about themselves. And all of them go home at night knowing they've had some success. In a few years from now, those children will go into specific games. And yes, we may have another CC, but more important, we've given all the children a chance to develop their motor skills, feel good about themselves, and that's the name of the game. This boy's been here with us for about four or five months. We basically started him from scratch. He's nine, he's from Russia. Keen competitor and concentrates extremely well for such a youngster. But here's the situation that we now have. We started him off in a semi-western grip and he has gone into an eastern forehand grip. Now what's so interesting about this? Do I make this change now and say get back into the semi-western? I don't think so. He handles this grip extremely well, and he loves coming to the net. Now, when Raul gives him a high ball, yeah, he's going to have a little bit more trouble right now. So, what do I do? Do I make a change now and say, you get into a semi-Western grip? No, I'm not going to do that. I think he's going to be able to grow in to his Eastern forehand grip as he gets bigger and stronger. So, I'm not going to do it. He just loves going to the net. And if I can get him into a good forehand grip, the same as Pete Sampras, his transition is a lot less when he comes to the net. So I'm going to let that be. He has a big swing right now, perhaps two feet too big, so what? That's not difficult to uh, take care of as he gets older. In fact, as he gets older, a lot of that will take care of him by himself. Look at that, he just even went down for the count there. That's how competitive is, but look at the smile he has when he comes back up. And oh yeah, this kid's a character. He's a happy kid. But then of course we have to bring in his parents a little later on. Already they're thinking of, wow, we have something here. And he's just a small little boy of nine years old. Now you have to tone this little character down a little tiny bit. He loves the power. That's much better. I'm letting him hit the beans out of the ball. But every once in a while, 
calm them down a little bit. That's all you have to do is calm them down. And then let them go back to hitting. Should we take this boy and say everything should be perfect? Absolutely not. He's a lot of free spirit. He thinks well. He's happy. He's got good footwork. He's got a darn good base to be a heck of a player someday. Swing at it. Good boy. And again, swing at it. Absolutely. Swing at it again. Good boy. And that's what you've got to do with these youngsters. Let them be brave. Let them get up there and swing at it. Hit those swinging volleys. They do it at 9, 10, 11, and 12. The day will come. Look, he even tried an overhead that time. Don't yell at him. Just let him go up there and do anything. That's perfect. What Mr. Agassi told Andre when he was a young boy, swing at it, Andre, you hit it. All you got to do is watch key points in the match. Does Andre Agassi push the ball back? Absolutely not. My development in tennis started with my father coming out on the court with me, teaching me how to play, and not really much done on our strokes. I played a ton of sets, I played a lot of matches, I played 10 sets a day when I was 8 years old. That's when I started really playing tennis. And my father, who didn't know anything about tennis but was an electrical engineer, said he was thinking logically and he thought that stopping the follow-through was the stupidest idea he'd ever heard. He said, you can't swing full speed and stop. Go ahead and let your arm go wherever it wants. And that was really what started me having a big forehand. I was 8, 9, 10 years old and when I was 11 years old I beat two guys with an ATP ranking in a money tournament because they were pushing the ball and I was running around you know weighing 80 pounds and hitting hard, harder than they were. So that was really what started with my dad but then you know there comes a time when you outgrow that type of relationship. You know I, I have two kids myself and I want them to play tennis but the only way I've ever seen players make it, not the only way, but a main reason is you have someone behind you pushing you. Because at a young age, it's difficult at seven years old to go practice every day. You know, you want to have fun, you want to play with your friends, you want to do something else. And tennis requires a lot of practice and a lot of time on the court. And so you need a pushy parent to be pushing you through those early years. But that's going to damage your relationship with your child eventually at some point if you take it too far, which everyone seems to do. So it's such a tough thing to say. I mean, in one respect, it's better to give your kid to someone you trust, some teaching pro that you trust, and say, you know, take over. This young lady is 11 years old, been with me three years. This is a product of spending hundreds and hundreds of hours on technique. Wonderful swings, good preparations, can hit over the open stances, get into a neutral stance. Excellent timing, hitting the ball up off the rise. This came about by establishing a plan. The plan for this young lady is to be a professional player. So we weren't so concerned about her playing record. We were more concerned of setting up and teaching her an entire game, just like there. She didn't even think. I didn't have to say one word. She goes up there and hits those swinging volleys. Now what should we do with a student like this at this particular time? Right now, you want her to start serving volleying getting accustomed to coming in, start working on return to serve and coming in, work on her slices, work on the angle shots. By the time she's 13 or 14, she's going to be a heck of a player. Will we start putting in some more competition? Yes. Next year, in the fall time, it's now May, I'm going to start stepping up her competition, not, be, not being concerned of her ranking, but just getting her into the field of things. And as McEnroe said, you can have a lot of people at practice. Well, what happens when the bell rings? And she's also darn good when the bell rings. Notice how she's always attacking the volley. And wonderful posture. This is what I want to bring out with this young lady. Her posture and balance is superb. Look at the upper body, almost still. Always charging and always challenging the ball. 
she doesn't wait for the ball. That's what I like. She doesn't wait. She challenges. Letting her feel what it is to have that open face and start putting a little underspin on the ball. She's doing this right here for a little bit of control. Look at that face open up. Now we're going to start doing one like that and one from the volley. Same principle. Now you do the same on your volley. Good, not enough spin. Look at all the spin you have there. Let me see that on the volley. Excellent. One and one. One and one. Excellent. And again, one and one. We're emphasizing the technique that we think will take her to be a top professional player someday. And each and every day you must watch the students. It's amazing how they go off track so quickly. And that's why as coaches, you have to be observing all the time for the small little adjustments they do. You have to work counteractive against these students. My father was probably the, the big help in my young age when I started playing tennis. I mean, he was a tennis coach himself, still is, and um, yeah, he was probably the big motivation for me. Then I came here when I was 13 to Bolo Terrace. Obviously, Nick is uh, one of the best coaches, motivators, has produced a lot of great players in the world, and uh, you know, he makes you believe in yourself. The facility here to train is very good. You got IMG who can give you the wild cards for the tournaments that are also very much behind you, and. That helps a lot, but also you know you need to believe in yourself and keep working hard. But with a good team around you, like I had with my father, Nick Bolletieri, and now David Amy, it just uh, happened to be working out very well. And sometimes it can be just too tough. The parents try to get involved in too many things, which then the player um, starts not to like anymore. You know, after a while, also. I think the player gets also older, wiser himself. You know, you have to learn from your own mistakes. You know, you can't always have people tell you what to do, I think. Once in your lifetime, you're either going to become a woman or a man yourself. You know, maybe it's tough to let other people decide things for the kids, but I have a good relationship with my family, and it's, I think it's one of the most important things. As a child begins to develop in sports or academics or whatever endeavor or direction they elect to go in, the parents have to sit back and let their child develop, and let the eagle fly. Can't cut the wings of an eagle. Gotta let that child get out there on their own and become the captain of the ship. And then the unbelievable happens. It looks like your child has a chance to really reach the big time. Man, I've seen all sorts of things happen. And at this particular time, the parents, more often than not, really get involved. Father changes jobs to be closer to the children sell their home, go to an academy or to a live area that has lots of tennis. The rest of the family perhaps are neglected. A lot of envy might be becoming part of the family atmosphere. They get involved so much that they become coaches, they become managers. And who gets hurt by this type of involvement most of the time? The student. All of us must remember, we as coaches, parents, that the most important part of the pyramid is the child. You must let the student develop. And if you let them develop, then we have a great chance for the student to reach their ability level. Will this situation ever be easy? Can I come up with a formula? Heck no. You know why? You're dealing with people. You're dealing with the bloodline. Not an easy situation. All I can say is, good luck. Looks like she may only be around five, 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 six, uh, maybe even a little taller than that. But so what I'm doing right now is I'm instilling in her that we're going to come forward. She's going to take the ball much earlier. So what you have to do, you have to start focusing a little bit more and challenge every single ball. You have to focus and always be going forward and trying to catch the ball going up. 
This has got to come from Harvard. You have to train it to do it here. If she gets to be by six, five, seven, five, eight, fine. But what we should do is to worry that she is going to come forward, hit the ball earlier than anybody else. She's going to create and she's going to come in. That's the philosophy. The coach, you could best compare to your best friend. Somebody you can trust, somebody you can speak with, somebody you can off the court even do fun things with. When it's off the court, just being a friend, not talking over tennis or anything. Do the business on the court and, you know, help you out. Do the things you want to do and uh, just have fun. It's from low to high, but then he ends up with a low point. So his, his forehand starts very conventional. He uses a lot of racket acceleration, very loose on contact. Look how loose he is. Beautiful backhand. Excellent timing. His timing's impeccable. I would look into the background of the coach, the track record. Are they introvert and extrovert? Their education how they talk, how they feel, their morals, their spiritual beliefs. I really would do a lot of homework. That's my first job. Homework before I give my child to somebody. But once you decide, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, whoever you may be, to let a coach be in charge of your child, then you should walk away. You then should continue your role of being a mother or father. Martina Hinkins' mother did a fantastic job. Brilliant strokes, great foundation. And just recently, during the French in Wimbledon of 99, there was a little breakup. They're back together again. Just got back together August of 99. I worked with Martina in November of 98. And I sort of helped patch that up. Richard and Mrs. Williams, they predicted what they were going to do. Everyone laughed at them. Strong values, education, religious values. Not playing many junior tournaments, if any. Hey, look what's happened. I can remember Mr. Selish. Not letting Monica compete a lot. Look what happened. So coaches, pay attention to some of these parents. Chains did a great job. The Everett did a great job. Mrs. Connors did a great job. Hey, learn from them. And then you have other families that when they get involved, a lot of things happen and the breakdowns come about. right here I have one of my best students uh, Todd Reed so gifted so good with his hands that he almost takes advantage of those hands without knowing it by just standing up and being very casual and I feel uh, you know McEnroe stood up too maybe we have another McEnroe you can't tell because he's so good I mean McEnroe didn't get down very much but he was always in position and even though his balance didn't look secure McEnroe did damn good when he volleyed. He was one of the best volleys in the history of the game. What we're going to do right here is just get him down into a little lower stance. Just get down into a little lower stance and just stay down. Don't lift up at all. Good boy. So all I've done right here is just lower his body a little bit. Let his weight be forward. He comes right back up into a good ready position with the racket out in front of him. He's now got the ability to shift his weight forward a lot easier than when you stand up and get caught with the ball, you know, where it knocks you sort of backwards a little bit and you get caught on the heels of your feet. Get that solid grip, get into a good ready position where you can transfer that weight or if a ball goes directly at you, you have a good base that you can slide the racket across your body and be able to volley with no problem at all. 
awful good day.